welcome to All Star Wrestling. This is Vince McMahon here at ringside. Pat Patterson will be joining us very shortly. Scheduled on the card this week on All Star Wrestling. Our feature attraction will be involved the hangman. The hangman involved in heads up one on one competition is the hangman will be rivaled by Super D, Special Delivery Jones and Jones. Looking forward to this outstanding matchup against the hangman. Should prove to be most exciting. Also on the card uh, this week, from Japan, we'll have uh, the great Yatsu. Also on the card, the $5,000 Cobra Clutch Challenge will continue. Sergeant Slaughter ready to slap the Cobra Clutch on somebody. We'll have that. We'll have the Moon Dogs and a whole lot more. We'll begin the festivities with the opening contest as we continue in just a moment. Discretionary viewer participation is advised for the following professional wrestling exhibition. Greetings wrestling fans and welcome to another action-packed card of All-Star Wrestling promoted by Phil Zacco. These matches are sanctioned and supervised by the State Athletic Commission. J.J. Binns is the commissioner. Chief deputies are Billy Longo and Peter Lash. Timekeeper at the bell, Mike Mittman. The attending physician is Dr. John Woods. The referees assigned by the State Athletic Commission Dick Worley, Gilberto Roman, John Stanley, and I'm your ring announcer for All Star Wrestling, Gary Michael Capetta. The first match in the ring is set for one fall with a 10 minute time limit. Introducing in the corner to my left from Europe, weighing 292 pounds, the Hangman. And his opponent from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, 242 pounds, Philadelphia's favorite son, Special Delivery Jones. Super D Jones. Here we go, Jones against the hangman. Jones shoved back there by the hangman. Hangman big, powerful. Then again, so is Jones. Well, Vince, this should be a very interesting match. You got two top men in the ring at the same time. And, uh, nice uh, takedown by Jones. It'll be interesting to see what's going to happen. Both very powerful. I can't get over the change in the SD Jones in the last uh, year or so. Uh, it's like day and night, Vince, uh, the change in that man, not only physically, but mentally. He came a long way, and he says, Pat, I fought hard, and I took a lot of beating, but he says, from now on, I'm on my way up, and I'm going to get there. Forearm smash, Jones retaliates. Look at Jones. Jones, I, for a moment, I thought Jones was going to stare him down. Hangman better watch himself. The hangman cannot figure out what SD John is doing. Either is a wrestler or a dancer or what? And a hangman asking for the uh, referee to come over. Complaining about something. You know, I was talking with SD earlier, and he was telling me, Pat, I am so determined to make it to the top. He says, nothing is going to stop me. And really, the way I feel, I told him, I said, SD, you don't have to work your way up. You are at the top. He really is up there. That's the way I feel about SD Jones. Yeah. 
Over the hip, nice takedown by the hangman. Scoop and a slam by the hangman. Well, that's uh, two different occasions. We've seen a takedown by the hangman. Over the hip, the third one. Jones simply scooped the ankle. Now, it is one thing that the hangman should not be doing is turning his back to SD. That you should never do, regardless who you're in the ring with. I'm very surprised the hangman is making that kind of mistake. Hangman wanting to lock up. Jones keeps him off guard. Jones being a southpaw sort of favors him, doesn't it? A little unorthodox. Much like the style of Pedro Morales. Hangman with uh, some additional leverage now, stepping over SD Jones. Well, Wrestling, I beg your pardon, Pat. Well, there's no question that uh, SD Jones is in pain at the moment because that Hangman is very, very powerful. And he's got that hold apply very well. Oh, that took some power, but the Hangman hangs on. Really putting a lot of pressure on that shoulder, Vince. SD making his move again. Forearm uh, smash there to the chest, as we saw. SD sweating profusely. He puts 100% of himself in that match. Well, this is a very important match, I would say, for SD. He's in the ring against a big man, a, a man that's been very successful. Well, he figures if he could get a win uh, against the hangman, it would be a good feather in his cap. Hangman wants to take that uh, left arm of SD's home with him, I think. Uh-oh. SD not fearing as well as uh, I think we imagined he would. You know, Vince, I'm sure that Dick Worley probably is a, probably figures and knows that uh, the hangman pulled SD by the hair, but he didn't see it. I'm sure that he didn't see it from the position that he was at, but he made sure that he told the hangman, you just don't pull the hair. Again, a yank of the hair, and Dick Worley caught him, the referee, and breaks it. SD with a little more fire now. Headbutt by SD. Boy, SD really laid his head in there. Well, that gives him a chance to, to recuperate. Both men had the same idea. Jones now maybe with some momentum. Yeah, picking himself up. <laughs> Hangman raking the face of S.D. Jones. Baby. 
blatant chokehold. Count put on the hangman. Kick to the ribs. A nice right jab. Another one. Oh, double shift. Left hand to the chest. Uh uh. SD hammering on the chin of the hangman. SD perhaps a little too cautious uh, in the corner. Yeah, I would say so, Ben. I think he should be a little bit more aggressive, especially with a man like the hangman. I mean, you just can't give him a chance. You gotta stay on top of him. At the same time, he wouldn't want to make a mistake, though. I think that Jones is so conscious of that. Sort of a slugfest here and a standoff. Headbutt. <laughs> well, we're free in between Jones and the hangman. The bell has rung. And we didn't see a motion of disqualification, so let's pick up the official announcement. Wrestling fans, that bout went to the time limit. The official decision, a draw. Hangman having a few words with the referee. This capacity crowd not appreciative of the Hangman's tactics. SD would like to have a little bit more of the Hangman, I'm sure. We'll be back as we continue in a moment. Ladies and gentlemen, this bout is set for one fall with a 10 minute time limit. Introducing to my right from New York City, 235 pounds, Pete Mitchell. And his opponent, he will be led to the ring by his manager, the manager of champions, the Grand Wizard of Wrestling. Weighing 247 pounds from Sunset Beach, Hawaii, the Magnificent Morocco. The Magnificent Morocco, the latest find of the Grand Wizard of Wrestling. And Morocco, definitely a different sort of individual in many, many respects. We'll have comments from Pat Patterson in a moment. The bell is rung and we're just about set for action. And uh, Morocco, just all over Pete Mitchell, Pat. What would you say about the abilities of Pete Mitchell thus far? Well, Vince, uh, I don't think he's too well experienced. I really feel that uh, he's probably just uh, making his debut in professional wrestling. And if that is the case, he's not going to do very much with Don Morocco. Look at the, the mass, the breadth of the shoulders on Don Morocco. Big man, you know, Vince, Don Morocco has been very, very successful in, uh, in professional wrestling. Uh, he's held different championship in the different different countries and also in the United States. And uh, he has given up wrestling for a while because his love besides wrestling is surfing. And he did tell me he is a fantastic surfer, has uh, surfed in, uh, champion, in championship uh, 
category, and uh, the guy is just uh, an athlete all around. Well, in Hawaii, I guess that's uh, the best surfing in, I guess, in the world, isn't it? In Hawaii? Yes, uh, Hawaii and Australia is also a very fine place to surf. Suplex, Morocco, having a good time in there. Look at him. He's looking over the Grand Wizard now. Smile on his face. Handsome young man. That much you have to give him. Well, I would agree with you, but that's one thing that he does know, that he's handsome and that he's got the ability and he's... Uh, a little conceited, just, right? Yes, that's what I was just going to say. And he can get down and dirty, that I promise you. So for the last couple of years, uh, uh, Morocco has not uh, got involved in wrestling uh, too much, but now he has one thing that he has not accomplished yet, is to become the world's champion, and uh, this is what he's going to work for. Uh-oh, I see what he's going to do now. Right, oh my. Right up against the throat, that bottom rope. Morocco whipping Pete Mitchell to the rope. Mitchell just kind of fell like a sack of potatoes. Sure did. He has uh, that thumb of his uh, wrapped up with some uh, tape, and uh, now whether he has something inside there, I don't know, but he's uh, utilizing that thumb an awful lot. That's an unusual hold Morocco has on uh, Pete Mitchell. Very unusual. Right back with it again. Jamming that thumb into the throat, the pecs, all over. So there is a good look at Don Morocco. The time of the match, three minutes, 18 seconds, and your winner, the magnificent Morocco. The magnificent Morocco victorious. Having no contest at all against Pete Mitchell, I'm sure we'll be seeing a great deal more of Don Morocco in weeks to come. The Hawaiian, quite impressive, and in some respects, as his name would imply, quite magnificent as well. We'll be back in a moment. This bout is set for one fall with a 10 minute time limit. Introducing to my left, from Japan, weighing 240 pounds, the great Yoshiaki Iyatsu. And his opponent from Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, 259 pounds, Frank Savage. Frank Savage against Yatsu. Here we go. Nice he's taken out a moment ago by Yatsu. Quick go behind by Savage. And a bit of a reversal. Well, Savage yeah. takes him down. Nice maneuver on the part of Savage. We should see some uh, very good demonstration of amateur wrestling move because that Yatsu is probably the best uh, amateur wrestler to ever come out of Japan. And in 1980, he was supposed to represent Japan in the Olympic. But Japan did uh, boycott to the Olympics, so he didn't have a chance to go. But he is, without a doubt, the best amateur wrestler to come out of Japan. There were a lot of hardships uh, placed on athletes that were unable to attend uh, the 1980 Olympics. Uh, Yatsu was not very well experienced in professional wrestling. He has started professionally not very long ago, loves professional wrestling, and he should be very, very successful at it.
Actually, I guess maybe Savage and Yatsu uh, began their wrestling, their pro wrestling career at least, uh, at approximately the same time, wouldn't you say? Uh, I'm not sure, Vince. I would think that Savage has been around a little bit. All right, longer. yeah. Savage seems to be picking up a little more uh, aggressiveness here. Yes, uh, Vince, I think he's got a. And Yatsu there. Yatsu not being aggressive, strictly uh, very good amateur wrestler, but he's going to have to learn that in professional wrestling you have to be aggressive. And I'm sure Savage has learned that uh, over the few months that he's been in professional wrestling. Nice takedown by Yatsu. Interesting sidelight that uh, Mr. Savage on his way, as we understand, uh, shortly to Japan. See how well the Japanese can fare against Mr. Frank Savage. If this is any indication, it's going to be uh, not such an easy time for Frank Savage. Tell me that Yatsu has won a gold medal in amateur wrestling in the Pan American game. So that alone is a good achievement, a great achievement on his part. And I'm sure in my uh, views that he will, uh, without a doubt, become a very, very successful professional wrestler. Savage favoring his left uh, leg. Certainly nothing wrong with his right as he uses the knee now to the back of the head of uh, Yatsu. Savage is a big man's man. Big, very big man. Was 260, 270? I don't remember the weight. Yeah, they he may him. even be larger than that. You know, when he when he started wrestling, I guess really it's only been months ago. He didn't seem to be quite as large. He's gained a lot of weight, a lot of bulk. He's had about uh, three or four professional. Uh, boxing fight. Yatsu laying him in there. Back to the leg now. Beautiful maneuver. Nice way to get back to the leg. A take down from a headlock and rolling over the body and go back to the leg. Very well done. A little rake in the face by Savage. Seems like you see more and more Japanese wrestlers in the World Wrestling Federation, uh, Pat. Yes, we have seen quite a few and uh, the Japanese uh, people in, uh, in Japan, which I've been there quite a few times, really, really love professional wrestling. And, uh, because of that, there are many young Japanese uh, amateur wrestlers that wants to break into professional wrestling. And because of that, there is a lot of Japanese wrestlers. That is a very, very big sport in Japan. It certainly seems as though we're seeing more of them in the World Wrestling Federation. I think perhaps the reason for that is that uh, unlike other federations, there seems to be more of an emphasis on the heavyweights here. And uh, there are more and more Japanese heavyweights. Very true, Vince, and uh, normally, you know, by the my point being, their race normally is not as large as uh, that of the American race. No, but uh, in the World Wild Wrestling Federation, you have some of the best and top wrestler in the world. So this is why the competition is much greater. Yatsu with a side headlock now. Savage with a vicious forearm. A whip to the ropes now. Yatsu off. Oh, Savage laying in another elbow. What a slam. Oh, Vince, that was dry, a driving slam, which I call him. And move, kick out by Yatsu. Trying to get him up. No, Yatsu. How about that maneuver? So Mr. Yatsu gets the nuke. 
The time of the match, six minutes, 45 seconds, and your winner, Yoshiaki Yatsu. Yoshiaki Yatsu, victorious. That's a tongue twister. We'll be back with our special interview, after which the $5,000 Cobra Clutch Challenge with Sergeant Slaughter, the Moon Dogs, Big Angelo, Mosca, and a whole lot more. Stay with us. Hello, Mr. Blassie, Killer Khan. You know, I've got a scoop for you and the rest of these pencil neck geeks. Just a matter of about two and a half, three hours ago, I received a long distance call from Mongolia, and I spoke to this gentleman's uncle's interpreter. And he relayed to me, this man is going to be flying back to Mongolia for a couple of weeks, in case you don't happen to see him. He's going back, and he's Jeez, being I'm, presented. I'm sure that, I'm sure the fans... Well, you keep quiet a minute. The fans are really going to be disappointed in that. That's right, they will, because they will miss seeing the greatest wrestling attraction in the world today. Killer Khan. Anyway, getting back to what I was telling you and before I was so rudely interrupted by you. The hair gets in his eyes once in a while, that little hair back here. Anyway, the man, he's being awarded 100 camels. 100 camels. In case you pencil neck geeks want to know the price of camels, go to your zoo and ask your zookeeper. Anyway, the man's going back. And he's going to be presented with that. And incidentally, another thing. I've been talking to WWF. And they're lifting the ban on his martial arts. They've restricted the use of his martial arts because it was too brutal and too devastating. But as of now, we can use it. And I guarantee you, his proponents sure won't like that one bit. You want to interpret that, Mr. Blasi? <laughs> if I told you what he said, we no longer would have a TV station. But I know it, and he knows what he's saying. And those other people out there, the people from Mon Mongolia, they understand what he said. But the rest of those pencil neck geeks are of no interest to me. Fred Blasi, you're a world traveler, and Killer Khan from Upper Mongolia. How does Upper Mongolia differ from Lower Mongolia? Well, one is a little higher than the other one. <laughs> you know, being a world traveler, I know all the answers. <laughs> He's a little slow. He's a little slow. <laughs> he likes <laughs> Even he likes it. <laughs> the hairstyle. You, you mentioned, uh, is there a name for the, this little... What not, I call it. A what not? A what not. That's the cutest thing I've seen. The best one we have is in special hairdresser. King is gone. That's right. You know that. I don't have to tell you. I've already explained that to you. He's a distant relative of Genghis Khan. How distant? Removed by... Well, it's quite a long ways back. But he is a distant relative of Genghis Khan. The man, you know, he sees the spirits when he looks up like that. Just take a look at him. Mean? You've never seen more meanness in all your life than written in this man's face. I'll have to agree with you there, Mr. Blassie. I guarantee you, anybody would run into this man in a dark alley would just dead, fall dead away. He wouldn't have to lay a hand on them. But I guarantee his opponents, whoever they are, makes no difference to me. Going along with Bob Backlund, well, the now, world's heavyweight champion. Mr. Blassie, Morales. we've been watching Killer Khan. You, of course, have been absent for quite some time. And I'm sure many fans have missed you here in the World That's Wrestling right. Federation. In any event, it seems as though without your presence, Mr. Khan, even though he's lost very few, if any, matches, it seems as though he's not quite the same when you're not here. The same is true, of course, of, of other individuals whom you manage. Well, the man, he believes in me. But now got you're that. sending him away? Uh, is there some oh. sort of a divorce, oh, no, 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 divorce no. impending? Or? I'm going along with him. I thought I told you that. I hadn't told you. Oh, you're going That's with him. right. I'm going with him. And I will also be presented a herd of 100 camels. And I'm going to put them over up there in the what grazing lands or wherever they put camels. But I guarantee you, I will also have 100 head of camel. You don't think that I'm going to let the greatest attraction in wrestling today go off by himself? 
The man might never return. Get home safe. In, in Mongolia, do they have one hump or two hump camels? They have both. In the upper Mongolia and lower Mongolia. Upper Mongolia, they got two humps. Lower Mongolia, one hump. All right, we thank you very much for your time, Mr. Okay, Blasi. Okay, you're welcome. And good luck with your camels. Killer Khan, Freddie Blasi, we'll be back in just a moment. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this next attraction is Sergeant Slaughter's $5,000 Cobra Clutch Challenge. And here introducing the challenger, weighing in at 225 pounds, the Black Demon. And here to defend his Cobra Clutch, here he is. It's going to be interesting to see what happened because I really don't know who the Black Demon is. I really don't know about his wrestling background. Who knows? I mean, maybe one of the wrestlers that's been studying the whole might be able to come out of it. Well, I think your point last week was well made, Pat, as to some strategy. Uh, McGraw almost got out, but had he not fought so much coming down on it, perhaps McGraw could have escaped. And I'm sure the Demon... The demons changed his mind, Pat. I'm not sure. I don't know. I don't think. I think he's a freaking a bit of a choke hole or something. I don't know. Pat? Why don't you see if you can pick up a slaughter, Pat, if you would, and have an interview with him. That's right, Patterson has made a motion. 
he gets not five, but $10,000 if he can escape the Cobra Clutch. and bleeding profusely slaughter right back on him. Patterson with a very nasty cut over the eye and slaughter still going to work. What a 
that's a nasty cut. We'll be back. We'll be back as we continue. The doctor will take a look at Patterson. We'll be back. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, the next contest, it is a tag team match. It is scheduled for one fall with a 15-minute time limit. Introducing in the corner to my right from Charlotte, North Carolina, weighing 236 pounds, here is Rick McGraw. And his partner from Venice, Italy, weighing 256 pounds, Dominic Denucci. And outside the ring, ready to step in with their manager, Captain Lou Albano, weighing a combined weight of 614 pounds. Here are the Moon Dogs. The Moon Dogs, Rex and King, taking on McGraw and Dominic Dinucci. Here we go. Dominic in there with Big Rex. Dominic keeping the Moon Dogs off guard. Lou Albano has the Moon Dogs prime for tag team action. They are something. Undoubtedly the most uh, unusual tag team combination we've ever seen. Nice reversal by Dominic. We will have a word later on from uh, Dr. George Sahorian concerning Pat Patterson's condition. Well, one moon dog running into the other. Big, powerful man, these moon dogs. In the background, you see Albano. Rex King and Albano, all of them bums. Not too many people would dispute that. That's Big King in there now, taking over the action on Dominic Dinucci. to the back. Tag is made now as Rich comes in and takes over. McGraw from behind. Uh, Lou Albano getting in a cheap shot. Triple team now. Where is the referee? Dominic trying to tag his partner McGraw yet to get into the match. Dominic using the back door. There's a tag. 
Drop that by McGraw. Look at that. Look at that. Unbelievable feat of strength on the part of Rick McGraw. Double team now. What was that, referee? I think it's McGraw that should be in the match, not the Nochi. I'm a little confused myself. Still no word on Pat Patterson from the doctor. We hope to have him uh, back with us next week. Oh, McGraw hauled over the top rope with a concrete floor. Oh, to the iron ring post. Incidentally, next, uh, scheduled next, we're gonna take you to a pre-recorded match with Angelo Mosca down across the knee. Two and three, lights out. So the Moon Dogs on the victory and scheduled next, Angelo King Kong Mosca in a match that was pre-recorded. We'll have a word, hopefully, from Pat Potter. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the next contest Set the one fall with a 10 minute time limit, but first I want to introduce the manager, the fearless Captain Lou Albano. And here in the corner to my left, from Toronto, Canada, weighing 319 pounds, King Kong Mosca. And in the corner to my right, from New York City, weighing 235 pounds, Jose Estrada. Jose Estrada to try his luck against King Kong Mosca. And he's as big as King Kong, and I think every bit as mean as King Kong. Uh -oh. Here we go. ripping the face of Jose Estrada. Pat, what are your impressions of Mosca? Oh, I'm very impressed. I mean, as far as his size and uh, as far as being his strength, I'll tell you what, Vince, I've seen him many times before in different states, and uh, a lot of the states where he's been suspended, because when Mosca gets going, nothing stops him. And uh, he's really, really a vicious man. Well, I don't think you'll find a uh, man that's any more stronger willed, as that matter, uh, any more strength in all regard. He's just one complete powerhouse, King Kong Master. <laughs> he has one of the most powerful, powerful set of legs I've seen in a long time. Mosca taking uh, Strada to midsection. Thus far, I'm surprised, even though realizing uh, as good as King Kong Mosca is, we haven't seen Estrada mount an offensive. And I don't believe we've ever seen a match whereby Estrada did not at least mount one or two, maybe three offensive. Very true, Vince. I was just going to bring that up. Normally, Estrada will escape. He'll jump out of the ring, uh, uh, gain his win back, uh, but uh, he hasn't had a chance to do anything. Well, Mosca, when he kicks you and when he punches you, Vince, you don't have no place to go but down. Cross the back, Jose Estrada. Submission hold. 
And King Kong walking around with Jose Estrada as his prey across the back. Keeps him up there. I mean, the, the match is over. Finally releasing Jose Estrada. You see the ease with which King Kong just whipped up Estrada across Ooh. his shoulders? Very, very strong man. Lou Albano has a prize here in Moscow. There's no doubt on it. I'm sure he's got two men in Moscow. Yes, sir. Moscow's biggest two men. Let's get the official time, if we may. Here is the time, two minutes and 32 seconds on the winner, King Kong Mosca. King Kong Mosca from the wilds of Canada. He's something else, Mr. Mosca. I suspect will be around for some time in the World Rusting Federation. Lou Albano, very, very happy with the latest turn of events. And there you see Estrada still recovering and favoring his back. Let's go now to see what, how much ease it was for Mosca to pick up Estrada in that back-breaking fashion. Estrada firing off a right hand. That's just about all he could do, surprisingly, against the likes of King Kong Mosca. From there, Mosca suppresses him, then whips him right back up across the back. Estrada wasting no time, you see. With the arm shaking, it's all over.